So, what is the gospel? Gospel is one of those words that gets thrown around a whole lot, doesn't it? So you'll hear people talk about gospel music, and and you'll hear someone say, I wouldn't take that person's word as the gospel truth. And in the church too, the word gospel gets thrown around a lot, and sometimes Christians aren't completely clear about what the gospel actually is. So what is the gospel? The first thing that I think it's important to say about the gospel is what what the nature of it is. What actually sort of thing is it? The word gospel, it actually means good news. That's what it is. Good news. It's an announcement. One way to think about the nature of the gospel is to contrast it with something like good advice, for example. So a lot of people think that Christianity is basically about good advice. You know, you hear people say this a lot, Christianity, it's, it's about a set of rules, it gives you a way to live. But actually, according to the scriptures, Christianity is not primarily a set of rules. It's not primarily even a way to live. It does give you those things. There's laws and there's commandments. There's lots of, you could say, good advice in the scriptures, absolutely. But at its core, that's not what Christianity is about because the gospel is good news, not good advice. Okay, so what actually is this news though? What's the content of the gospel? It is true to say that the word gospel is used in different ways in the Bible. There is a broad use, you could say, of the word gospel. So we talk about the first four books of the New Testament as gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this is because at the beginning of those, like for example in the Gospel of Mark, in chapter 1, he talks about this being the beginning of the Gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And there he seems to be using the word Gospel in a, you could say, in a broader sense to refer to the whole life, the whole ministry, all of the teaching, everything about Jesus Christ. But then, more commonly, what we're talking about when we use this word gospel is you could say gospel in a more narrow sense, in a more specific way. And this is always to do with the death and resurrection of Jesus for us, what it accomplishes for us. And I think that the best place to go to think about what the gospel actually is, its content, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in the first few verses. Because what you get there is basically the Apostle Paul giving us a sort of definition, if you like, of the gospel. So I'm going to read to you now from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. And in this, particularly around verses 3, 4, 5, and 6, you basically get a succinct summary of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here it is. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, of the gospel, that is, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of who are still alive, though some have died. Okay, so for the Apostle Paul here, the content of the gospel, what it is, it basically comes down to four things or you could say two pairs of things, and then what these things do, what they accomplish. The four things are the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and the appearances of Jesus. Those four things, though, you can sort of break them down into two pairs, can't you? There's the death and burial of Jesus, that goes together. And then there's the resurrection and appearances of Jesus, they go together. 
The way this works, I think, is that in each case, the second part of the pair confirms the first. So I'm not sure if it's ever struck you as sort of being a bit strange that there's all this emphasis in the Bible and in the creeds on the burial of Jesus. Why mention this? It's in the Apostles' Creed that Jesus was buried and the Gospels take quite some time to detail how Jesus was buried and that he's buried. I think it's actually fairly simple. Burial confirms that you are dead. So Jesus really died. He didn't just sort of pretend to die. He didn't just suffer and sort of go into some sort of a coma and then wake up in the cool of the tomb. No, Jesus really died. A real human death as the Son of God. And you know this because he was really buried. The burial confirms his death. And then it's the same for the appearances of Jesus in that second pair. So his appearances confirm that he was really bodily raised from the dead. So when we say resurrection, what do we mean? You know by the appearances. You know that this wasn't just a spiritual resurrection of some sort. It wasn't just that there was some sort of immortality of the soul and his soul went on beyond death. That's not what Christians mean by resurrection. And it wasn't that this was just sort of some experience in the minds and hearts of his disciples that it was as if he was alive to them. That's not what Christians mean either by resurrection. And you know this because of his appearances. He appeared to people. They could touch him and he even ate fish at one stage just to show that this was a real bodily resurrection from the dead. The appearances confirm his resurrection. This is the content of the gospel. The death and burial of Jesus his resurrection from the dead and his appearances. But then there's another very important part of what the gospel is. Paul says that all of this happens for our sins. In other words, these are not just interesting historical facts that have no bearing on us. But this was all for us. This accomplishes something in our lives. And Paul's way of putting it here is that it's for our sins. That is, it's on behalf of us and our sins. Jesus died as the sacrifice for our sins. Jesus took the punishment that our sins deserved on the cross. Jesus suffered and died as our substitute in our place. And in his resurrection from the dead... He conquered death, which was the consequence of our sins. Jesus died for you. And he rose to new life again, the same new life that he now shares with you. This is the gospel. This is the Christian good news. Can you see how this is different from good advice? I could give you some good advice about how to deal with your sins but it's not going to take them away. It's not going to deal with them in the way that Jesus' death and resurrection does. And there's no good advice in this world that can bring you through death to life eternal. But the gospel does give you that. So if this is what the gospel is, what do we do with it? How do you respond to the gospel? There's lots of things you could do. You could thank and praise God for this precious gift. That's certainly a good thing to do. You could share it with others. That's certainly a good thing to do. But it's interesting in the text, what Paul actually says we should do with this is even simpler than that. He says that this gospel is that which you receive and you stand in, and it's that which saves you, and it's that in which you believe. You receive it in faith. And that's because of the nature of it. It's good news, not good advice. The core message of Christianity is not about something you are to do. It's about something that's been done for you. You hear it, you receive it, you trust in it. That doesn't mean it doesn't affect your life. This changes your life. Think about other good news in the world, like the news of when the Allies won the victory in World War II. 
And think about when that news was announced to people throughout the world, especially in those countries where the war had been raging. What could they do with this good news? They weren't called to do anything with it first except just receive it and trust that it is true. And as you do that, wow, it changes the way you live in all sorts of ways. So this is the gospel. This is one of the reasons that I rejoice in being a Lutheran Christian, by the way, because I think the Lutheran Church brings us the clear, the pure, the joyful gospel of Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection for our sins, the salvation and new life that this brings us. This is Kairos, time to build up. God bless you.